today we get to talk to Pastor Steve Sicolante, who is a worldwide international evangelist whom I met at Mount Sinai in Arabia. He was a witness to the miracles at Sinai that we saw. The wind and the rain and the snow and the thunder and the lightning. It was an amazing event. Now he has a prophetic warning for America. So let's listen to it right now. Join ancient language linguist, author, educator, and biblical archaeologist, Dr. Miles Jones, as he explores the writing of God. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Writing of God. Today we have the pleasure of speaking with Pastor Steve Chicolante. We caught up with him in Houston, Texas, where he's been participating in the Awaken America Tour with Eric and Laura Trump. Mike Lindell, General Michael Flynn. But we know Steve from, well, we met you know, actually at my engagement dinner in Saudi Arabia on March 13th. And we were at Mount Sinai together the day I was married there at the base of Mount Sinai. Steve was on the other side, witnessed all the miraculous weather events that happened after we did the Ketubah vow at the base of Mount Sinai. So I feel like you're part of the family, Steve, and we've managed to keep in touch with you since. But Pastor Steve has been talking about this eclipse coming up on April 8th. He was present at the other eclipses and, and, and gave, well, I'm going to let you explain. Is this a warning that we're seeing here in a total eclipse? In fact, two eclipses covering the very same point there in Kerrville, Texas at the at the 77 foot cross. What what do you read from that? It's an extremely significant sign for the United States. It actually makes uh, three cross points in Oregon, Illinois and Texas is obviously the first one that got the warning sign. It's um, I stood at a, a, a church you know, podium in August 2017, issuing that this is the last warning for America. America is the you know, most blessed country on earth, but we've just squandered our wealth, our resources, the gospel that we've been given. We keep building bigger and bigger things. You know, this is like the motto of America, bigger is better. And COVID kind of uh, shook America up and said, bigger is not better. Everything kind of went decentralized, the whole world and the gospel is meant to be decentralized, not to be controlled by somebody in one central place. So I issued that warning and within hours, literally within hours, uh, Hurricane Harvey, the most destructive, most costly natural disaster came and struck uh, that area in Houston. And I'm back in Houston talking to you. So you and I have this, uh, you know, extremely uh, prophetic, um, at least travelogue. We met at Mount Sinai together. We were in Saudi Arabia together, which I think is extremely important for the end times. And now I'm back in Houston, kind of closing the circle. It's been seven years. And this next eclipse is, um, it's got so many prophetic things about it. We, we can just you know, delve into it as, um, as you wish. Uh, but the first one's confirmed. The second one was October, uh, 2023. And on that day, by the way, on that very day, I shared the stage with uh, Michael Flynn in uh, Miami. And uh, th there are all sorts of other numbers and conjunctions that relate not only to my life and Flynn's life, and but also just to the United States and uh, this, the towns that it's gonna go across. All these things are just spelling out final warning to America. Please repent, please get out of complacency and lukewarmness and start taking seriously the gospel. That's really great and I, I agree with you, but I, I really think there's a reason. I mean, it, it says clearly in the Bible that those who, uh, you know, bless Israel, I will bless. And those who curse Israel, I will curse. Well, who has been the biggest supporter of Israel since their inception? It has been the United States. We, we uh, accepted, we acknowledged their independence as a state one minute after it was declared. And it is the United States that has become the most prosperous country in the world, bar none, and the strongest. But I, lately, uh, 
we seem to be backpedaling really rapidly and, and anti-Semitism is rising up in a, in a great wave in our elite universities. You know, God gives and he takes away and if we want to go down that path, there will be consequences and I believe that. I don't think many of our viewers will look at around at the world, the country and the world we're living in today and say that we're not in trouble. Would you agree with that? Yeah, absolutely. So we've got a an an very anti-Israel administration right now. That is not good for Israel. We've got nor the, us. The <laughs> yeah, and, and not good for us. Um, the October seventh uh, massacre is a defining uh, milestone for for our relationship with Israel. It obviously did not provoke that attack. It's obviously innocent, and for. Uh, American university students to be so brainwashed that they go out after 1,500 innocent civilians get killed and then to um, defend the perpetrators. I mean, that's just the most wicked of wicked. It's like going to pat the back of a rapist and saying, here's, you know, here's a, uh, have a cone of ice cream because we sympathize with you. It, it's so, so wicked. So we can see that um, Gaza is a big problem. I have a solution for Gaza that I haven't heard anyone else say that uh, it's pretty radical, but I think we could do something about this situation and use this opportunity right now. So we have to pray, but we also have to talk to those who are leaders who are in charge and maybe they're watching your program and we need to tell them the Bible has a solution for all this. Yes, well, that's, that's a really good word. Uh, I see something extraordinary going on here. I mean, the, the, uh, the, the Hamas radicals have taken more than 100 hostages. And now the United States is calling for a ceasefire. Now remember that at least a dozen of those have American citizenship, probably dual citizenship. But we're telling Israel to back off and have a ceasefire when there's American hostages being held there. Now, now how does that work? We're asking them to stand down and ignore their citizens and we are pushing it and ignoring our own citizens. I don't understand that. That has never happened. Usually an American has taken hostage. We're all over it, but not anymore, I guess. We don't care about the Israelis taking hostage. We don't care about the Americans taking hostage. What's gonna to happen to a country like that that doesn't even care about its own citizens? Yeah, so what, who are they answering to? That's the question, right? So obviously, if they don't care about us, they're answering to somebody else, and the answer is very clear. It's coming out. There's an exposure coming. You know, I believe this is a season of justice, and part of justice is a discovery of the facts. And the discovery of the facts is that the censorship is controlled by globalists. Um, these policies are controlled by globalists. The money funding out to Ukraine is controlled by globalists. They're not interested in the American interests and what the people want, not even during the election. What they want is a globalist to a tyranny, which the Bible predicted. The Bible says that there would be one day such a, uh, an attempt to go back to the Tower of Babel and try to form this secular one world government. And that's why we see such irrational behavior. It is satanically inspired. It's fueled by a philosophy of Marxism. And they're not answering to us right now. But I think, Israel has a, I think Israel has a great opportunity. If Israelis are watching, you know that Christians have been your friends. There have been some you know, misunderstanding history of um, non-born again, non-biblical Christians persecuting the Jews. But I think it's pretty clear that modern Christians and even during World War II, born again Christians loved the Jews, protected the Jews, support the state of Israel. And so what I would call for, and this is very radical and it's beyond the subject of this TV show, but I would call for Israel taking the historic opportunity to select its neighbor, turn Gaza into a Christian nation, get rid of all of Hamas, and we will be the best neighbor that you could possibly uh, find on earth. And then we would solve the problem of terrorism uh, against Israel. We would also solve the problem of Palestinian Christians and Arab Christians that have been displaced and persecuted for decades and decades. I don't see any other solution. If you go back to the status quo, you're gonna see more terror. And I think this eclipse is, is again, it comes at this historic time. Why? Because right around Passover, right around, uh, um, actually not Passover, it's, it's going to be, yeah, it's Passover on the religious new year. So it's at the end of the mm -hmm. religious year and uh, very close to Passover. I think we can see a redemption for Israel. And I see uh, several scriptures that, that would support this. 
You know, Israel in the end time, in Ezekiel 38, has has cities with un, unwalled cities, unwalled villages. They do get attacked in the end. Anti-Semitism will be there until the end. But why do they have unwalled villages? They must have friendly neighbors. I cannot think of better neighbors for Israel right now than Christians. Mm -hmm. I, well, I agree with you. I hope I hope they somehow take you up on that offer. I, I see what we're having here is you said a couple of things that are really central. One is that our government, American government and world governments are no longer answering to their people. They are answering to a, a satanic plan. And I think a lot of pastors are afraid to say that, but that's what is happening. And we're seeing all the elite universities in our country actually indoctrinating our children in anti-Semitism. That has caught me completely by surprise. Uh, and I, I think that really spells doom for us as a country if it continues like this. Right, so the only way, uh, and this is one, one of my mission, why I'm here in the States, why the Lord told me to go to all 50 states. Uh, my main message is to proclaim justice. Jesus is coming back to judge and we are to understand and execute justice one of the things that would be would be just, of course, would be that America gets judged. But how do you how do you stay the hand of judgment? It would take a repentance straight from the yes. Congress or the White House. And I think Donald mm -hmm. Trump could do that. He could say, you know, I apologize for and you could name a list of countries that America has mistreated or broken its covenant, broken its treaties. Um, Putin's interview with Tucker Carlson is just a list of broken promises, whether you think he's propagandizing or not. There's so many countries, including Israel now, that just feel like America has uh, broken, it has not kept its word. And we yes. can change that by repenting. You know, that, we, we, that is really good. And I, w I would love to see that come out of the next president. We have to stop here, but keep spreading the word of repentance and keep talking about the, the eclipse that's coming up. And let's see if the world responds. But thank you so much, Steve, for being here. And we'll, we'll keep watching for you. And to our viewers, we'll be right back in a moment with more. We have a surprise for you, a special offer of a series of video teachings on the Moedim celestial events in the heavens and what God is trying to tell us. Not only that, it comes with the book on the research on the Moedim from Jonah's eclipse when he went to Nineveh to ask them to repent of their iniquity and that once mighty city had fallen so deeply, Yehovah sent his prophet Jonah to the crucifixion of Yeshua and the celestial events in the heavens at that moment that have everything to do with the text of the Bible. All the way to Columbus, whose life was saved by a lunar eclipse. You'll see it all in Moedim and much, much more. How we use it to calculate the correct ancient timeline by retro-calculating the celestial events like eclipses that are described in the ancient records that give us the correct ancient timeline, which, by the way, matches the biblical timeline. That's wonderful. And we're going to give it all to you in this three-part series along with the Hebrew book of Revelation from recently obtained manuscripts translated and going into publication as part of this three-part bundle. Go to writingofgod.com right now and order yours. We are back with Pastor Steve Chicolante, who has been crisscrossing the country, trying to warn people about the total eclipse that's coming up, which is we've been warned, we've been warned, we've been warned. We have a total eclipse in 2017. We had an annular eclipse in uh, October just a few months ago, and now at the same place we're having another eclipse, a total eclipse, and by the way, I mean, it's happening right at my hometown of Kerrville, Texas. It crosses the grounds of the institute, the B'nai Emunah Institute, the Die Direct. So I'm taking this kind of personally, to be honest. I think 
Yehovah is trying to tell me something specifically, so I'll be up at the cross doing events and talking about the celestial events in the heavens and what their meanings are and what God is trying to tell us. Uh, and that's something you know a lot about. You have been traveling around the country, you know, really spreading the word on this. So uh, I'd like to hear more. What do you think? Well, it all started back in 2014 with the Luna Tetrad. I think that's when Christians began to accept that Jesus gave us warnings. He said in Matthew 24, the sun mm -hmm. will be dark and the moon will be, be turned into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord. So uh, we true. started looking at the lunar eclipses and 2014 was, was extremely significant. I don't know if you can even remember, you know, people don't remember, but ISIS, um, you know, the, the, I believe the Antichrist system really uh, reared its head at that time. The whole Ukraine war actually started in 2014 with the um, American coup that um, displaced the duly elected government of Ukraine. That's when really the conflict started. Putin mentioned that. So we now move to from there to the solar eclipses. Well, and hang on one, one second, one second. That was also the time of the Hamas tunnel war. They had taken the money had been been given them to restore their country and built tunnels, a system of tunnels underneath Gaza, which were, and they used them to invade Israel uh, in secret, and uh, now they're using them, of course, to uh, avoid being captured or killed. And this is, this is with money we gave them, and the United States is funding them that are attacking us, and the world has been funding these Hamas organizations to the tune of hundreds of millions of dollars. Their leaders literally are worth billions of dollars that they have put in their pocket from all this largesse that the world has put upon them, hopefully to buy them into appeasement, but they're not buying in, into appeasement. They are using it to do violence against Israel and America and other countries. They, they are just not, they're, they're not happy. They are really violent and they're just not being bought off, are they? So what do you, what do you think is, is going to come of all this? Well, you know, enemies never make good neighbors. Enemies <laughs> never make good neighbors. So you have to change your neighbor. And I think that's what we mentioned in the last session is I think the only solution is a radical one. Turn Gaza into a Christian nation, turn it into a Christian homeland for all the persecuted uh, refugees. But that's gonna take a miracle, I understand that. But I think what it means is because we have a bad track record of choosing bad friends. With, we are the ones that funded the Taliban. We're the ones that funded Hamas. I think these guys are going to be and are already on our soil. And we're going to see some kind of explosive um, confrontation after April 8th, uh, the solar eclipse. If I can mention how many solar eclipses there have been, I'm going to go through this and Please. try to show you and the audience why we think that this may be leading to a, a war. So... Now, Mark Biltz, he's the one that first noticed the Tetrad. He says that there are eight solar, uh, total solar eclipses over the United States in 1776. I just want to add to that. I think that there needs to be a correction. I believe I counted nine. So I'm going to go through nine of them. Uh, 1778 to 17 and 1780, obviously those two solar eclipses going across the United States was exactly the same time as the Revolutionary War. Then you've got 1860, right? Obviously, the Civil War, 1869, the end of the Civil War in 1878, those coincide with the American Civil War, you know, North and South. Then uh, he missed this one, but 1918, there was a total solar eclipse, and it was exclusive to the continental United States. If you know you followed the uh, um, the coronavirus pandemic, we know that there was a sign given before of the Spanish flu that was 1918. Mm -hmm. And millions and you, of people died in that. More people died with Spanish flu than bullets in World War I. Yeah, extremely significant, extremely. So these signs are objective, they're in the sky, no, no religion is controlling it. God is the one that's sending this out of his mercy, trying to get the attention of the believers. You've got one in uh, 1970, and then again in 1979, solar eclipse over the United States, it's the Vietnam War. Mm -hmm. So now we've got three that spells Aleph and spells Tav. Aleph looks like an A, and then the Tav, the old, Paleo Hebraic Tav, which is your your expertise, Miles. Uh, mm -hmm. Thank God for you, and thank God for your translation of the Hebrew New Testament. But uh, Tav in the Old uh, Hebrew is a cross, right? Obviously representing Aleph, the 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 sacrifice, the sacrificial ox, 
on the cross representing Jesus Christ, you've got a left top spelled over the United States. That's a wow. good sign in the sense that it's the beginning and the end. It's the final warning, but also it's, it's, it spells Jesus Christ's sacrifice over this land. So mm -hmm. we need to, to stop being lukewarm and we need to repent for all these things that uh, America's done and get serious with the gospel. So uh, we've got one in 2017, 2023, 2024. It seems, right, it seems from all of these patterns since 1776 that God is warning us of a war. I think this is a domestic war. I think this is the Red Horse War. This is where people turn and kill one another. So it's not like two foreign parties coming in together, but people within the same territory are killing one another. That's the language of Revelation 6. It sounds to me like a civil war, which is unfathomable because the civil war, the first one was so horrific, it killed more people than all the foreign wars. A second one would be terrible, but you can see there's sowing and reaping. We've been funding Hamas, we've been funding the Taliban, and they're currently on our soil because the border is porous. So yes. what do we need to do? Right. There's the, that's one. That's one danger. But another one is there are three states now that are trying to take Trump off of the ballot so people can't vote for him. And if any one of them succeeds, it's sitting before the Supreme Court now. What if they give them permission to do this? Well, I'll tell you, there will immediately be 14 states that have already said they would take Trump off the ballot if they could. Uh, what do you think would be the, the result of that? That's one thing, and that's a rhetorical question. You don't have to answer it. But the other is, you know, why all these young Chinese of military age and these young Iranians of military age and all these MS-13 gang members are just flowing into this country? You know, sexual trafficking, especially of young children, is like through the roof, like 2,000% increase. What is going to happen? Do you think there are going to be no consequences for these things? Uh, I doubt it, you know, that there, it, that's, that's absolutely unthinkable. There are going to be massive consequences. These, these kind of massive social changes you're making that have nothing to do with God's law. There will be payment due for these things. There will be a price to pay. And yeah. we're being warned. Well, I think the hedge of protection is coming off of America. And I think it's because yes. the church itself is no longer uh, serious about its mandate. You know, we're just having user-friendly church services and we're no longer serious about our mandate to actually rule, govern, occupy till he comes, enforce his, his laws and his standards of morality. We think um, secularly, we think separation of church and state. So the Chinese thing is very important. I think uh, I, I'd like to add this for your audience to know that there's a lot of mysterious fires going on, right? We had one in um, <laughs> Maui, very mysterious, mysterious in California, mysterious in Texas, right by right, nuclear. Right now, 285,000 acres on fire. Yeah. Right. Well, what would it take? It would take a few thousand people with a bunch of Roman candles in the trunk of their car to set the entire country on fire. Well, it, it, it's, very, it's easier than that for the Chinese because they have satellites that flew over each of those locations at exactly the time when the fires ignited. Now that's not a smoking gun, but that's you know strong evidence that this is interference from a foreign power trying to start a war and destroy our country. What were those satellites doing? We need to know. Do they have weapons of you know um, uh, direct energy weapons? Because they flew right over. You can see. You can watch yeah. these satellites. Chinese there's, satellites. I believe there's are. one up there right now. Is there not? I mean, they see that we're weak. So I mean, and we are. We're not even bothering to shoot down spy balloons over our country. So what does this well, say about us? Well, because the Biden family is paid for by the Chinese and paid for by the Ukrainian, and they're not answering. And there you to have the it. There that's, you have it. Foreign amazing. influence, foreign bribery that is affecting our nation. Uh, but you know, Steve, you know why? It's go ahead. Because we have been doing it to all sorts of other foreign countries. Mm -hmm. We use our money instead of giving it to aid to the people. It's basically bribery for the dictators. We've been sowing we, it and so now we're reaping We have. We have. We've been sowing that kind of evil and, and using it in a very wrong way. And now we're reaping the, reaping the consequences of that. Thank you, Steve, so much for, for being courageous enough to come on TV and say exactly those things. So we're so glad you're here. And to our viewers, stick with us. There'll be more right after this. The writing of God will continue in just a moment. 
I'm Dr. Miles Jones, and we have prepared for you an amazing teaching series called The Writing of God. We're going to take you to Mount Sinai and examine all of the evidence of the Exodus, both old and the newly discovered evidence that we've just brought back. Evidence that has been hidden from you for 3,500 years. Why hasn't this evidence been revealed before? Pretty simple. You know there's an anti-God agenda going on in the universities. The secularists have decided that the Bible is merely a fable. The Exodus, a legend, the mountain of God, nothing but a myth. And this is what they're teaching our children in the universities. This is their major tool for stripping our children of their faith. But I can tell you, we have been there. We've been to the mountain. We've examined the evidence. We've found the footprints of the Israelites there with alphabetic inscriptions. We have translated these alphabetic inscriptions and they tell a story that comes straight from the pages of Exodus. We've been to Moses' altar. We've been to Aaron's altar of the golden calf. We've been to Rephidim and the split rock and we're gonna take you there because the truth of the Bible is something you need to know. And we have the scientific evidence of the truth of the seminal event of the Old Testament, the Sinai Covenant. And we're going to bring it to you in the writing of God. That's The Writing of God, P.O. Box 294047, Kerrville, Texas, 78029, or online at thewritingofgod.com. This is The Writing of God with Dr. Miles Jones. That was an exciting interview that we had with Steve Sicalante, and we're going to be talking to you about some really incredible celestial events in the heaven, and we have prepared video and a book to go with it that explains their occurrences in the past and the biblical events and meanings of them and how we use them to calculate the biblical timeline as the correct ancient timeline. We are also publishing Revelation, the book of Revelation from the Hebrew and English translation from documents we have just recovered and it's all for you coming to you now. Don't miss the next episode of the writing of God. Will you seek the Lord about becoming a partner to bring the message of the writing of God to more people? Send your gift to the writing of God, PO Box 294027, Kerrville, Texas 78029, or online at thewritingofgod.com. That's the writing of God, PO Box 294047, Kerrville, Texas 78029, or online at thewritingofgod.com.